Newton mechanics is all about finding the motion of a mass particle in space under the influence of certain forces. For example, we could try and find out the position of a mass particle in dependency of the time t that falls down from a certain height h only under the influence of the gravitational force. This would be a very typical problem in Newton mechanics. But first, let's talk about Newton's second law. It states that if a force acts on a mass particle, it gets accelerated. There is also the very famous formula that force equals mass times acceleration. Now we only need to know that the acceleration of a mass particle at some time t is the second derivative of the position x of t of the mass particle. When rewriting this, we get this relation here. Because the force can itself depend on the position and the velocity of the mass particle, we have to solve a differential equation. This equation here is also called equation of motion. So normally we have to do two things. The first thing is to find out which forces act on the particle to get to our equation of motions. So the first step is find out which forces F act on the particle. Then we have to write down our equation of motion uh, from Newton's second law. And secondly, we have to solve this equation. So this is the second step. We try to solve the above equation for x. This is sometimes only possible numerically. Now let's take a look at some examples. The first one is the one we already saw in the beginning of the video. The mass particle that falls down from a height h only under the influence of the gravitation. So the only force that has an influence on the particle is the gravitation. The gravitational force is directed downwards. So we get for the gravitational force that it's equal to minus, because it is directed downwards, the mass of the particle times the gravitational constant. From Newton's second law, we get that m times the second derivative of x is equal to the gravitational force and this is equal to minus m times g. So we get uh, for our differential equation or equation of motion that the second derivative of x is equal to minus the gravitational constant. To solve this, we also need two starting conditions. The position at time zero and the velocity at time zero. So the position at time zero of the motion is h, because the particle starts at height h. The velocity at time zero is just zero, because at the starting position the particle is not in motion. This is a very simple differential equation. We can solve it by integration. The values for the integration constant can be found by inserting the starting conditions. If you are interested in the solution of this differential equation here, you can find it at the bottom of the screen. As I said before, it's a very simple integration task. Okay. When taking a look at the same problem but with air drag, the equations change a little bit. So we still have the gravitation that influences the particle, but also this force here that's called air drag and acts in the opposite direction of the gravitation. So it slows down the motion. 
This here is the gravitation, we already know it, and that is the air drag. The K is some kind of positive constant. We also see that the air drag depends on the velocity of the particle. So the faster the particle moves, the larger becomes the air drag. By the way, it would be more realistic if the velocity here would be squared. But in this case, you can't solve the differential equation we will later get by hand anymore. So we stick to the more unrealistic air drag for now. We should also check the sign of the air drag. It should be positive because it's pointed upwards, which you can see here. Because the velocity is pointed downwards, which means it is negative, this is indeed the case because we have a minus here. So the air drag is positive. When using Newton's second law, we can just summarize these two forces here. So the gravitational force and the air drag. And finally we get m times the second derivative of x is equal to minus m times g, which is the gravitation, minus k times the first derivative of x, which is the air drag. When rewriting this, we get our equation of motion, which you can see here. I also want to point out that you can see a dependency on the mass m in this equation of motion. This was not the case in our last example where we haven't considered the air drag. The next step would be to solve this differential equation for x. But I won't do this at this point. But I'm planning to upload another video where I will show you a step by step solution of this differential equation. So, when you are unsure how to solve such a differential equation, watch out for future videos. Now to something completely different. Let's take a look at the pendulum that moves only under the influence of the gravitation. The first thing that is important here is the following. If you can find out how the angle phi changes dependent of the time t, you also know the motion of the mass particle. So what we want to find is this angle phi that is a function of the time t. The second thing is that, because of the gravitational force, there arise two other forces, radial and tangential force components F2 and F1. We need to find the tangential force component F1. We need it for Newton's second law. So the important force component is F1 and we want to find it. This is not too difficult at all, because the forces F1, F2 together with the gravitational force G form a right angled triangle. We also know this angle here. It's phi. Why? Because here we have the angle phi and this angle and that angle are obviously the same. So this angle here is phi 2. But now we can use the sine to find the formula for F1 because we have a right angle triangle. So the sine of phi is just F1 divided by Fg. Now we can rewrite this relation here and get the formula for F1. We did this here. So F1 is equal to fg times sine, fg times the sine of phi, and this is equal to, because we already know what fg is, we have it here, it's minus m times g, so this here is minus m times the gravitational constant g times the sine of phi. Now that we have found our important force f1, we can use it in Newton's second law, to find our equation of motion.
when we do this we get m times the acceleration a is equal to f1 which is equal to minus the mass m times the gravitational constant g times the sine of phi the only problem we have now is this acceleration a which is the tangential acceleration a we want or we need a dependency on the second derivative phi here on the left because we want to have a differential equation so we want some kind of second derivative of phi here on the left so what we need now is a relation between the tangential acceleration a and the, and the second derivative of phi luckily this relation is very easy we have written it down here the tangential acceleration a is just the length l of the pendulum times the second derivative of phi and now we have our second derivative phi here on the left which we wanted when we rewrite this by bringing l on the right side we now get our um, equation of motion which you can see here next we can write down our starting conditions so a starting angle phi zero and a starting velocity but the biggest problem we have now is that this differential equation is not solvable by hand because this differential equation cannot be solved by hand there is often used an approximation called small angle approximation so for really small angles the sine of phi is approximately phi so when replacing the sine of phi with phi we get a second order linear differential equation that can be solved pretty easily now let's take a look at projectile motion so the problem is formulated the following way we have a particle that is thrown in the air with a starting velocity v0 at a specific angle phi and it moves in the air till it hits a maximum and then it falls down and hits the ground again we want to find the motion of this projectile when it is only influenced by the gravitation first of all we can decompose the starting velocity v0 into a horizontal and vertical component so we decompose v0 into a horizontal component and a vertical component as you can see here the same we can do with the position x we decompose it into a horizontal component and a vertical component so x1 describes some kind of a width and x2 describes some kind of a height of the traveling mass particle the good thing now is we can consider these two components x1 and x2 independently that means we first try to find x1 by using Newton's second law. In this case, we only have to consider forces that act in horizontal direction because x1 describes the motion in horizontal direction. Then we try to find x2 and only need to consider vertical forces in Newton's second law. This makes our calculation more easy. So let's start with x1. We need all the horizontal forces that act on the particle, but the only force that acts on the particle at all is the gravitation, and it is a vertical force, which you can see here. Therefore, there are no forces that act on the particle in horizontal direction. Using Newton's second law, we get the following m times the second derivative of x, x1 is equal to the horizontal forces but these horizontal forces are zero and therefore we get a pretty easy differential equation we also have the um, starting conditions here 
So um, x1 at time 0 is 0, and the velocity in horizontal direction at time 0 is the first component of the, velocity, the starting velocity v0. To solve this differential equation, we only have to integrate two times and calculate the constants that arise uh, by using the starting conditions. When doing this, we get the following solution x1 is equal to um, this here, which describes a uniform motion. So we have found the motion in horizontal direction. By the way, you can also write this first component of the starting velocity v0 um, using the starting velocity v0 and the cosine of phi. I won't do this at this point, but I'm just telling you that this is an option. Now we consider the vertical motion x2. We need the forces in vertical direction. The only force we have is the gravitation. So we get the following equation by, by using Newton's law. m times the second derivative of x2 is equal to the forces that act in vertical direction, but the only force that acts in vertical direction is the gravitational force, and this gravitational force is equal to minus the ma mass m times the gravitational constant. We already know this particular equation. It's the one from the beginning of the video, where we considered a particle that fell down from a height h. The starting conditions are a bit different. So here we have the starting conditions, but you should be able to solve this yourself. At the end of the video, I want to repeat this general approach again. So when you want to find the motion of a mass particle by using Newton mechanics, the first step is always to find out which forces F act on the particle. Then you have to write down the following equation here, which is the uh, equation of motion. The second step after that is to try to solve this differential equation, the equation of motion, for x. I hope this video was helpful and showed you the basic concepts of Newton mechanics. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel.